Well, here's a good one for the uh, five minute treatment, uh, enough to get a lot of people upset. Are we too soft on crime? Look, every day we hear lurid stories in the press about somebody who's committed an atrocious crime after being released from prison or out on parole. And the minds of many prison sentences are not long enough and parole boards are incompetent. But many look to the effect of the environment and upbringing and believe we should be humane and give all criminals, however egregious their crimes, a second chance. So obviously there are different ways of looking at this. So let's take a look first of those who say, yes, we are too soft and proud. Well, uh, most of all, I suppose they would point to the fact that a huge number of criminals reoffend within a year. It's simply ridiculous that we tolerate this. The public believes that we're too soft on crime. Every time they take a poll, a huge majority say that punishments do not match the crime. And there are some awful examples. This chap Roy Whiting was given four years for abducting and sexually assaulting a nine-year-old girl, of which he served two and a half years, and in 2000 he abducted and killed eight-year-old Sarah Payne. Now, how much do you have to do to deal with that reasonably? In America, there's compelling evidence uh, that the threat of uh, long sentences can reduce to a violent crime. Some states have these uh, three strikes business, which has halved a violent crime uh, uh, because they have to go to jail after a third conviction for life. Criminals just make it clear that, that violence can't be programmed out of them like it was some kind of neurotic tick. Uh, Many of them are violent because they want to be. It's their tools of the trade. It gets them what they want. They can impose their will, financial or sexual gratification, whatever it is, and uh, irrespective of the hurt for others. They just don't care. Look, the state has betrayed us. They have, in effect, subcontracted the job of managing the criminal elements to the population at large because they're unwilling to spend more money on the penal and the justice system. It's as simple as that. Well, what about those who say, no, we're not too soft? Look, the annual cost of keeping 85,000 people in this country in prison is enormous. We could be using that money to rehabilitate them rather than just simply keeping them in a mindless and destructive environment. And very often, it's not the fault of the perpetrator that he's, he's usually had an extremely dysfunctional upbringing, been subject to dangerous and mind-altering environment. Indeed, metal, many are mentally ill. So. We should take these things into consideration and accordingly we should be compassionate. Well, what's my take on this? Well, I have quite a bit to say about this. Look, it seems to me that there are probably four kinds of rationale for imprisonment. First, uh, to avenge a horrible crime, an eye for an eye and all that. Second, to act as a deterrent. Third, to reform and fourth, to protect the public. As for avenging, look, I have a lot of sympathy for those who've had a loved one raped or murdered, but the taxpayer is just simply not in the business of funding revenge. It's, it's not a good rationale, however satisfying it may be for those closely involved. It does seem to work as, de as a deterrent in some crimes, especially the sex offenders, where recidivism, according to the statistics that I see, is surprisingly low. I suspect that's probably because such people are given such a horrible time in prison that they, they never want to repeat it. But it doesn't detect, deter burglars, for example. As for reform, it sounds good and we should do the math. Let's follow that path if for those types of people and crimes where the data supports it. But beware of dodgy statistics. There's a lot of morale. There are always agendas in both kinds. So you've really got to look out of the design of the study. Look, the essential rationale is that of protecting public. Pr prison should provide a means for ensuring that criminals are, who are inclined to hurt the public are kept off the streets. So burglars who are incarcerated many times over make a mockery of our community and the justice system. We should have either a three strikes and you're out policy, which means life or a very long a prison sentence after a third conviction, or at least doubling sentences at each conviction. And as for jihadi terrorists and other criminals with an ideological persuasion, look, we should either deport them or sentence them to life. They're, they're simply not going to become nice after they've been counseled. <laughs> um, they have a permanent impulsion to hurt the public, which we might as well fix. Well, look, that's it. That's my uh, 
enlightened view of this uh, subject. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a like, the usual thing, uh, subscribe, notify, comment, and so forth. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.